In this video, we are going to discuss about energy levels in atoms and line spectra. Let us revise spectrum first. Remember the splitting of white light when passed through a prism into subsequent colors. These colors together are called as a spectrum. This is what a normal continuous spectrum is supposed to look like. Fraunhofer, while he was studying the spectrum using the sun as the source of light, he found the spectrum to be missing few colors. These lines were later known as Fraunhofer lines. If you want to know about detail of his experiment, I'll drop a link here at the top. The reason for Fraunhofer lines was later explained using the Bohr atomic model. Along with absorption lines, if you heat a gas and you look at its spectrum, that spectrum looks something like this. These lines are called as the emission lines. The reason for emission lines was also explained by the Bohr's atomic model. Let us revise the structure of an atom. The atom is considered of a nucleus, positively charged protons and neutrons. The electrons, negatively charged, revolve around in defined orbits. In chemistry, you learned about orbitals as well. Different orbitals have different energy levels and you are also familiar with how the electrons are filled up in the orbits. So, the reason for Fraunhofer lines was, ex was explained by Bohr model. He said that the energy levels are quantized. That means the energy levels in between these two orbits, they cannot exist. As a result, there were only specific lines. So what was actually happening was that the electron was revolving in a certain or orbit. When light was incident on it, it absorbed that energy, moved to a higher orbit and hence we have that gap in the continuous spectrum. For emission spectrum, the opposite was happening. The electron was releasing that quantized energy, moving back to the orbit and revolving over there. So we get only the lines of the quantized energy that were emitted. So let us have a look at the definitions. Absorption spectra, a spectrum of electromagnetic radiation transmitted through a substance showing dark lines or bands due to absorption of specific wavelengths. So the electrons that were jumping from lower level to higher level, they were absorbing certain wavelengths, certain quantas of energy, so there were gaps at specific wavelengths. Now for emission spectra, a spectrum of electromagnetic radiation emitted by a source, so we we'll only get those quantized states where the electron jump from higher orbital to a lower orbital. So absorption spectra, we have gaps in the continuous spectrum. Emission spectrum, there are lines instead of having a continuous spectrum because since the states are quantized, you cannot have continuous states, hence the lines are not continuous, they are discrete lines. Now, let us talk about energy levels. This is a common arrangement that you see about energy levels in chemistry. Ground level is the orbital that is closest to the nucleus. It has the quantum number n equals to 1. It has the energy of 13.6 electron volt. The energy here, we label it as negative because as you move away from the positively charged nucleus, the energy is supposed to increase until you have at infinite distance from a positive charge, you have zero electron volt of energy. So based on the quantum numbers, we have the energy levels for n equals to 2, 3.39, n equals to 3, 1.51, n equals to 4 and so on. At the infinite distance, we will have the energy equals to zero electron volt or we can say that if the electron gains enough energy then it will leave the atom and we will have an ionized atom or we can have an ion. So let us say an electron from ground level jumps from n equals to 1 to the second level n equals to 2. In that case the energy change will only consider the values of the energy so energy 1 13.6 minus energy 2 will be equals to hf it will absorb energy equals to hf so that quanta of energy e1 minus e2 equals to hf1 to find that frequency we'll do energy level 1 13.6 minus 3.39 divide by the value of Planck's constant in electron volts simplifying it we get the frequency as 2.47 times 10 to the power 15 hertz 
Similarly, if an electron was to jump from ground level to directly the third level of 1.51 electron volt energy, then E1 minus E3 equals to HF2. We put the values simplified, we get F2 2.92 times 10 to the power 15 hertz. Similarly, if the electron were to jump from ground level and to leave the atom completely, that means go to the level n equals to infinite, in that case, E1 minus E infinity will give us that frequency divided by the Planck's constant, so 13.6 minus 0, we get that frequency as 3.29 times 10 to the power 15 hertz. While doing the calculations, be careful about using the correct value of Planck's constant. If these values are in electron volt, use the value of Planck constant in electron volt, or if they are in joule, use the value of Planck's constant in joule. Similarly, we can find the wavelength by using the frequency value lambda 1 will be C by F1. So, C, velocity of light, 3 times 10 to the power 8, divided by the value of frequency. And we get the wavelength as 1.21 times 10 to the power negative 7 hertz. Remember that you'll get the same values of frequency if the electron were to jump from a higher energy level to the ground level or any numbers in between because these states are quantized. For this concept, I'm not covering much detail because a lot of details is not included in your syllabus. But if you would like a separate video about the Bohr atomic model, please do leave that suggestion in the comment and I will cover it.